everyone, this is Anna with the Paint Mixer, painting from home with you today. So before we get started, I'm just going to go over how this works. So you should have your own creativity to go kit. Um, and pretty much how this experience works is we'll be taking you step by step through your painting. Uh, between steps, you're welcome to rock out to music. And the cool thing about painting from home is you can wear pajamas, you can be eating your own snacks, and you can take your time. So um, if you're following along with our videos, feel free to press pause and rewind if you need to see something again. But pretty much how this works is I'll go step by step. In between steps, you can rock out to music, dance, just have fun. And this will go back and forth for however long you like. And by the time you're finished, you'll have your very own masterpiece. So a couple things to keep in mind is that it's your very own masterpiece, so it's going to look different than mine, and that's okay. So have fun, get creative, don't be afraid to go rogue. Maybe you want to do something a little different than our examples, you're welcome to do so. We've given you all the tools to kind of create your own masterpiece. So maybe if you want to do something like finger paint or a landscape that looks a little different than ours, go for it. Alright, so let's talk about our tools of the trade. First of all, in your paint from home kit, there was some butcher paper. So make sure you lay that down on whatever surface you're painting on because we're working with acrylic paint. Acrylic paint is water-based, so water is your friend whenever you're switching colors in your brush. You can always clean out your brush with the water. If you get paint on your clothes, it can become permanent once it dries. So this is a good time to grab an apron, an old t-shirt, something to protect your outfit. Also roll up long sleeves if you're wearing long sleeves. If you do get paint on your clothes, you can always get it out with soap and water when it's still wet. Key, still wet. So uh, just keep that in mind as you're painting. Our next tools of the trade are our brushes. Very important. So we use five brushes in total, and depending on which painting you're creating, you're probably only going to have two. But I'll go through all of them just so you know which one is which. All right, biggest in the brush family is the Big Daddy brush. This guy is really good at spreading a lot of paint very quickly. Second largest brush kind of has a rounded top, looks like a makeup brush. This is the Mama brush. Really great for blending if you're creating a sunset, a smooth gradient. It's best to use the Mama brush. Also, when you're not using your brushes, you can always put them bristle first in your water cup. So that way you can reuse them and the paint doesn't dry on the bristles. All right, brush number three, the square brush. This is the shape of a square, and it's great for right angles, straight lines, anything geometric. All right, last two, the larger of the two. This one has a rounded barrel and kind of comes to a point and is a little fluffy. This is the Sharpie brush. Great for a variety of line widths. If you use a light touch, you get a very thin line. The harder you press with this brush, the bristles flare out and you get a very wide line. And lastly, the littlest in the brush family, this is the baby brush. Great for itty bitty details, things like signing your painting, outlining, and anything small and delicate. So, the brushes are yours to keep. Um, if you'd like to use them again, make sure you use proper brush care. So when you're done with them, you can rinse them out with soap and water and blot them to dry, making sure there's no paint left in the bristles and they'll be ready to go for the next time you want to get creative. Those are the tools of the trade. Um, have fun with them and we hope to see you again soon. But thank you so much for supporting our business and getting creative in these hard times. Um, be safe, be well, have fun, and get creative. Don't forget to check out new offerings and creative opportunities at thepaintmixer.com and you can always share what you make on Instagram and tag us at the underscore paint mixer and we would love to see everything you're making from home. Thanks again. Hi guys, Anna here from the paint mixer. Uh, today I will be guiding you guys through the sea turtle painting. So um, hopefully you've already watched all the introduction videos um, on how to kind of set yourself up and let's get started. So if you're following along with your instructions, step one is to get the square brush and we are going to start 
with white and yellow in the top left corner. Make sure my, my canvas is the right orientation here. Um, so starting in these, this top corner, we're going to be creating a gradient from white and yellow to green to blue. So getting my square brush a little wet to start, mixing up some white and yellow, and just kind of making some diagonal strokes starting in this top corner. And these lighter, brighter colors uh, are really easy to cover up or to make a little darker. So I'm going to take this further than you think, maybe taking it to about halfway. And also, don't forget to paint your side edges as you go. So that way you don't need a frame for this little guy. Already looks professional and gallery wrapped once you have the edges covered in color. All right, so my paint is still wet, and this is the perfect time to do some blending. So I'm going to take a little bit of green, and check this out. Whenever I blend it into that yellow, maybe a little water on the brush for this, see how it starts to kind of make a lime green? Now, you'll notice wherever you put the brush to start your stroke kind of has a little square mark. So instead of starting in this corner and pulling down, I'm now going to pull so that my strokes really blend into the yellow and I don't have these weird squares kind of taking over. So pulling the green up into the yellow, making a nice blended transition. And when I start to get down into this kind of spot without any color, I can be a little more liberal with how much green I use. And you can even mix in some yellow into your green if you really like that lime color. And I'm taking this green, again, a little further than you think, because we'll be overlapping it with blue here in a second. So if you ever are having a hard time filling in all the little grooves of the canvas, a tiny bit of water on the brush really helps the paint spread into the canvas texture. So the texture we're kind of creating is that of refracted light and water. So nice smooth blends and kind of streaky like light going through the ocean. Alright, so now I have yellow, green, last bit of my gradient is going to be blue, this phthalo blue, which is really nice and deep. So I may start with just blue here in the corner to kind of fill in that white space. I can't forget my edges. And now I'm going to do that same blending method, pulling up into the green. And notice I'm flicking up. I'm not starting my brush stroke in the green. I'm starting my brush stroke in the blue and kind of flicking into the green. So you're totally welcome to mix up the colors. Maybe you're really loving the blue and you want it to go a little further over the green colors. That works really great. You are the artist today, so anything you decide is the right choice. All right, so now I have a nice gradient. Um, and I'm just going to kind of get my edges the ones I forgot about, these green ones here on the side. And once you have color all over your canvas, front and sides, you can let this dry a little bit. So always remember to put your brush in the water cup when you're not using it so the bristles don't dry out. And a trick for drying is you can carefully pick up your canvas and give it a shake. If you have a hair dryer, that really speeds it up. But um, now's a good time. Maybe grab a snack or a drink and meet me back here in a little bit. All right, your canvas should all be dry now. And if you're wondering how can I tell if it's dry, you can give it a little tap. Or you can kind of shine in the light and see if there's any shiny spots. So I still have a little wetness right there. But that's totally fine. Um, our turtle is black, so it's going to kind of overpower all these colors we have on here. 
So now I'm going to find my baby brush, the little brush. Um, and if you want to use chalk to kind of sketch out your turtle, you're welcome to do so. This is kind of a nice training wheels because as you sketch, you can always rub it off if you're not um, if you're not liking the shape you made, a little less committing than black paint, which is what we'll be using. Baby brush, black paint, and we're just going to sketch the shape of our turtle. So a couple tips. One, start smaller than you think. So I'm going to start with my turtle shell shape. And I'm starting, you know, a little conservative on the size because it's really easy to make something bigger, harder to make something smaller. All right, so I have my nice kind of oval shell, round little shell, and now my head. I'm going to be a little circle with the neck, and I kind of feel like they have a almost like a pointed nose shape, so maybe more like a heart shape in the neck. And then the uh, fins are just going to be kind of little shark fin shapes. All four of them coming off the side like he's swimming and a little tail because it's cute so now at this point you can step back from your piece and kind of notice anything so when I stand back I notice that my head looks a little small so I may just kind of bulk bulk his head up a bit doesn't need too long of a neck he's a he's a little chunky guy and I'm also going to widen my shell. So once you're feeling good about your shape, you can go ahead and fill it in. So for the smaller bits, probably sticking with the baby brush to fill it in with black paint's a good idea. But for these larger areas, you can always find your square brush again and do some real nice big strokes to fill in the shell. So we're starting with the silhouette first and then we'll kind of decorate on top of this this black so be be careful doing these kind of smaller bits with your baby brush and edit the shape as you go if you need then we're just gonna let this black paint dry before we add all the fun decorations that's the most fun part of this painting is decorating our turtle shell so go ahead and let your turtle dry brushes back in the water cup don't forget and I'll meet you back here once your turtle is all dry nice work okay our turtle is all dry so now we get to do the fun part decorating our shell and our turtle this is going to be not the baby brush because everything is pretty you know small at this point so I think it's a good idea to kind of start with the larger shapes and work our way to the small itty bitty details. So I'm going to start with my favorite color, which is this green and white together. When you mix them together, it's kind of like toothpaste, really minty and pretty. And I'm just going to create a shape in the middle of my turtle. There's no right or wrong shape here. You can do a triangle, a square. I'm kind of just doing a freestyle turtle shell looking thing. And then I'm also going to kind of outline a little bit in some areas. And the cool thing about this is it's really up to you. No right or wrong color. So if you like this minty color, you can stick with that. If you want to experiment, if you add a little yellow, it becomes like a lime green. Any uh, color you want to make creamier, more opaque, just add a little white. And then from here, I'm going to just kind of continue on those shapes. Just kind of building, building on. It's kind of like a doodle. Lines and shapes. And from here, you can use repetitive strokes that are really nice and kind of meditative, like maybe little kind of tiny lines around the edge of the shell. I'm trying to go fast. It's kind of hard. You guys should definitely take your time. All right, so once I have all of these, 
show you another fun thing. So using the wooden side of the brush, the baby brush tail, the wooden part, you can dip and dot. This is really great for if you want to do um, precise little dots. You can kind of make the back of the shell like a mandala and really go to town with these little dots. But keep going and um, really not too much from here. Take your time in decorating your shell. I'm going to take my time too and I'll meet you back here for the last two steps. I'm almost done decorating my turtle shell. Super fun. Love this painting. And uh, just keep in mind, you can always have more than one turtle. If you really love this one, why not add another one? It could be like a really small one. All right, so once your turtle shell is totally decorated, then we're going to add a little texture to our fins and to our head. So in any green you like, I'm sticking with my, my toothpaste color, baby brush. I'm going to kind of remove some of the paint from my brush so I don't have a ton on there. Only a little bit of paint on the brush. And then I'm just going to dab really lightly on one side of my head, one side of my fins, even a little bit on the tail. See how this is kind of creating some uh, almost scaly like texture? A little more three-dimensional quality to our fin and head. Pretty cool, huh? All right, final, final step. With that baby brush in hand in your favorite color, go ahead and sign your painting. Initials keep it really simple. You're welcome to write a little message on the back if this is a gift for someone. It's always fun to do. So one last thing. Uh, before we leave each other, don't forget to post your painting on social media and share all the beautiful things you've made. So our Instagram is at the underscore paint mixer. And anything that you have made uh, while you've been at home, we'd love to see. And keep looking for other paintings that we'll be offering throughout this time. Thank you so much.